this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is part three in Unit um, 3's discussion of how cells communicate with each other. And in this video cast, we're going to focus on the receptor tyrosine kinase reception system. And as before, before we proceed, make sure that you've watched the video cast before this one and that you can answer these five questions. All right, if you can't answer these five questions about the G-protein coupled receptor, then the next video cast is probably not going to be very helpful. All right, receptor tyrosine kinases are receptor proteins that are located in the plasma membrane, just as we saw before, and they start out as inactive monomers. Okay, and what that means is, if you look at this picture, here is the plasma membrane. This is the cytoplasm down here. This is the extracellular matrix or the environment. We have a signal molecule or a ligand molecule again that has a shape that allows it to fit to a receptor protein. In this case, the receptor is not a G protein or anything connected to G protein. It's something called a tyrosine kinase. All right, And notice that these tyrosine kinases are separated from each other currently, so that we're calling them monomers. And notice now that no, no ligand has bonded to the receptor site. Now watch what happens in step two. Okay, in step two, two signal molecules are required to cause these two tyrosine kinases to bond together and form a dimer. Okay, they're no longer monomers. They now become a double molecule or a dimer. Okay, and this causes a conformation shape change. Okay, they have changed shape in some way that is going to allow them to be activated and eventually sell a signal. Okay, now tyrosine kinases are frequently used to regulate growth factors. Okay, growth factors are signal molecules that can stimulate cells to grow and repair tissues, all right, or cause an organism obviously to increase in size. In step three, we now bring in the energy side of this. Okay, so once these um, tyrosine kinases have been activated by receiving their signal molecules and joining together into a dimer, they are phosphorylated. And notice that it takes multiple ATPs. In this case, it takes six of them to fully activate this system now. So once it's completely phosphorylated, now it is completely active. All right. And notice that these that this part of the molecule is actually dangling down into the cytoplasm so that other molecules can interact with it, which is what we're going to see next. Now in step four, this fully phosphorylated and active receptor can now be recognized by multiple proteins, and these are called relay proteins, which are going to be part of, um, of transduction pathways. And because more than one of them can interact with the tyrosine kinase dimer, this one um, tyrosine kinase system can trigger many separate cellular responses. Okay, so for example, this protein, this relay protein could cause one response, whereas another type of relay protein could cause a second response. Okay, so the idea here is the cytoplasm is full of inactive relay proteins waiting to be switched on by interacting with the fully phosphorylated tyrosine kinase system here. And this whole system was turned on, so to speak, by the interaction of the part of the tyrosine kinase that projects out into the environment or the extracellular matrix where it can receive a signal molecule or a ligand. Okay. Now, why is this important? One receptor, receptor tyrosine kinase can activate 10 or more different responses, and this provides a way for cells to regulate growth in many different ways. Okay, The more options you have, the more you can fine-tune a system. And if something is complicated, for example, as a human being, uh, this is absolutely critical that the system is very finely tuned, very regulated. Okay, this ability of one tyrosine kinase receptor to activate multiple responses is a big difference between receptor tyrosine kinases and the G protein coupled receptors. Okay, and finally, third and probably most interesting, at least to me, is that many of the cancers that plague humans and plague animals and plants are caused by mutations to the DNA that builds the tyrosine receptors. Okay, and sometimes these mutations can cause these tyrosine receptors to activate without a signal molecule. So in this, so if you think about it, this is a way that a cell can start growing out of control. And if you think about it, 
That's basically what cancer is. Cancer, of course, is when a tissue or a cell in your body, for some reason, stops listening to the control mechanisms and goes um, juvenile delinquent, so to speak, and doesn't listen to all the signals that it should be listening to that keeps it, quote, normal, unquote, and it becomes cancerous, okay, or malignant. Uh, that's a word you may have heard of. All right, we'll stop there. Thanks for listening. The next part or next video cast is going to be about ion channel receptors.